Apple closing in on a historic mark, a $1 trillion market value. The stock hitting $200 a share for the first time just a little while ago. Who better to join us now but the Dean of Valuations? NYU's Oswath Demodaran is with us now by phone. Oswath, thanks for joining us today. I'm glad to be here. Uh, so taking a look at Apple, despite a 5% move higher in the stock right now, uh, it's still trading at about 17 times next year's earnings estimates. I mean, you compare that to some of the other FANG names, Alphabet 53 times, Amazon 162 times. Is this stock still undervalued? I, I think it's, a, it's reasonably valued. And here's why I think the P ratio is not that good of an indicator. If the company is about 30%. I mean, if you look at the amount of cash they have, and you take that out of the mix, they're actually not trading at that high a multiple of earnings. So I think, unlike the other tech stocks, which are trading richly relative to future earnings, Apple is still a reasonably priced stock. So I think that's got to be brought into the mix somewhere. In terms of closing in on that trillion-dollar mark with the market cap, and we've never really seen that before, how would you expect right. this stock to trade from there? I mean, there's really nothing comparable in the market. I think you've got to you, you, you've got to be reality based when you invest in Apple. This is a cash machine, but it's not going to be a high growth company. Those days are behind it. But it is the greatest cash machine in history, and I'll say that again because it's a company that can it can't stop throwing off cash. I mean, companies wish they had Apple's prom. So I think as long as you're realistic that you're buying a low growth company that's going to throw off cash like crazy for the next few years, then I think you're re you're getting a reasonably good investment. Uh, so you mentioned that uh, Apple stands out relative to the other very large technology companies for having a relatively modest valuation. Is there any information that you would infer from the fact that the market, despite the fact it's willing to pay up generously for all these other big fancy tech stocks, continues to restrain the valuation on Apple? In other words, is the market telling us that we have to be concerned about ultimately the maturity of the product line or mm -hmm. Apple's ability to continue to earn these margins for a very long term? Yeah, there are two things holding back Apple. The first is that it is primarily a smartphone company now. It's not a computer company. It's not an iPad company. It is a smartphone company. And you've got to reinvent yourself every two or three years to continue to be successful. So you're only as successful as your last upgrade or whatever the new model you came up with. The second is the smartphone business is leveling off. It's not 2009. when You have lots of growth ahead of you. So I think the market is building those realizations into the valuation of Apple. I think Apple has hidden jewels, and those are the things that you're investing in. The fact that you have more than a billion and a half people with Apple devices around the world, in a sense, gives them a user base that if they can figure out other ways to make money off that user base, I think you could get a bonus on that growth rate. But I think the market's being realistic about both the fact that it's a growth, uh, th that its growth is low and that it's so dependent on the iPhone for its success. Oswath, I, I want to dig in a little more to some comments you made uh, before, the fact that this is not necessarily a, a high growth company. I mean, I'm just looking right. at the revenue numbers, 17 percent growth, profit rose 32 percent, iPhone sales up 20 percent, services revenue up 31 percent. How is that not high growth? Well, I, I think in a sense you've got to look, at, look across cycles. I, uh, Apple, if you look across quarters, the quarters after they introduce a new upgrade, a new model, get that surge in growth, and then you see a leveling off. So often you see people overreacting to whatever the most recent quarter's growth rates are. My suggestion is look across the last five years. You're going to see a growth rate which is in the single digits, not in the double digits, across the quarters. And I think that's what we have to do, and especially with the smartphone business. The rest of the businesses, you might have growth, but the bulk of your revenues still come from the iPhone. And in that, you, you go across quarters. Your growth is much more moderate than what you see in the most recent quarters. Finally, Azwath, I wonder um, what you make of, you know, every time we talk about their cash hoard, people talk about what they could buy and still have money left over. I mean, they've been judicious on M&A. Yeah. Uh, does that strike you as curious or not? No, I think that's great. As an Apple investor, I'm so glad they haven't bought Twitter or Tesla or whoever else people suggest they should buy. I think it takes an incredible amount of discipline and restraint to do what they've done. I mean, they must, they must lock out bankers from the Apple, Apple campus because I'm sure every banker on the face of the earth is trying to get them to buy something. I, w I hope and pray that they don't do a big acquisition. In fact, I'd rather that they return the cash to their investors and the investors find out other things to invest in with that cash 
So I think they've shown discipline and restraint and I think that's a good thing. Oswath, quickly before I let you go, you mentioned you're an investor in this company. Are you buying today? I'm holding what I already have. I'm already over invested in Apple in a sense because <laughs> every time it goes up, it's a bigger percentage of my portfolio. I'm holding for the moment.